Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be swapping out the NVMe drive inside the Legion Go S and this is the SteamOS version. So how I go about cloning the actual drive is with an offline cloner. This is the way that I've always done it. So when I do get this out, it's going to go where we have the source, which is the one inside here, and then into the target. So I don't have to use any extra software or anything. I literally just plug this in, I run it, once it's done, it beeps, and then I'm good to go and I can swap the drives back in. So if you uh, wanna pick up an offline cloner or you often switch out your drives, this is one option to do it, but it is a little bit more expensive. But I do mine often enough that it's not a big deal. That's the most effective way for me to do it. So that is how I'm gonna clone my drive today. So let's first open up the Legion Go S. And on the back here, there are three screws. So we'll catch those at the bottom. And this is an anti-static mat that I'm using. So it makes it just a little bit safer to work off of. And then I've got these little blocks here and I use that just to protect the screen when it's down and the joysticks because it won't sit flush otherwise on it. So these little styrofoam blocks, super handy. So the next thing we need to do is actually take this off. So there's screws underneath here and then we have to take the uh, triggers off here too. So to get this off, I'm just gonna start on the corner here with a plastic spudger to lift it. And so you see that came off pretty easy. And you wanna make sure your device is powered off of course, because it would not be ideal to be working on it while it's powered on. So just make sure that it is powered off. If you can have your battery a little bit lower too, that's always good when you're working with your devices to have you know less than 20%, but if not, that's okay. If it's fully charged, don't sweat it. We're gonna unplug the battery on the Legion Go S anyway. And just gently keep working your way through this because you don't wanna break any of the clips on here. There we go. There we go. All right. So that's off. Inside this device is a one terabyte drive. And I find that that's just not quite enough. But since this is Steam OS, I'm actually gonna only upgrade it to a two terabyte drive. If I was running or planning on running the Windows operating system, then I would be using a four terabyte probably on this. But with just Steam OS, I'm not gonna do that. So the two screws on the edge are the longer ones and there's a shorter one in the middle. And then now that we have those off, I can pry off these. Bumpers, not the triggers, but the, bump, the bumper buttons and just be careful taking this off. There we go. So there's a little clip in there. So you wanna make sure that you don't crack it or anything off of that little edge there. So even when we go to put them back in, we just wanna make sure that that's good. So there's another screw that's hidden here. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing to this side. this up. If you've got a guitar pick style spudger, you can use that too, but I prefer this style. I find it's pretty handy for most of the projects that I do. Oh my gosh, hold on to this a little bit better. Come on. Just let the screwdriver slip out of my hands. This is just a <laughs> There we go. It's just uh, slipping right out. That's all right. I'll get a grip on this one. Okay. So that's going to be all the screws. And now the most important part is just prying this part off. Okay. So I'm going to start by prying up on the sides here. So right where that screw was, there we go. 
You can push right off and then that'll help release this. And then you can uh, start to work all these clips. So there's the clips at the top here. And then we have some underneath this. Okay, I'm gonna just start working from the bottom here since this part released so easily. Just try to take the path of least resistance. There we go. Okay, and then that'll make it a little easier for the top. Now we're free. I just wanna make sure that nothing's gonna catch. So there's no wires, which is great on the back side. Makes it a little bit easier to work with. Now I can use these blocks to set this down. And the first thing I wanna do is take the battery out. So there we go. That one's nice and easy to pull out. You can see inside here that we just have the smaller drive, but it still can fit a 2280. And so we're gonna pull this out. That's a neat adapter. I've never seen an adapter like this before to extend out here. I mean, why not just put a 2280 on here? Seems odd that they would just use this unless they had some extra ones from their first original Legion goes. But again, it seems kind of strange, but it's cool the way they set that up. Okay. Now I already have this heat sink on here, so I don't need this. I'm going to well, let's see if I can still use it in here, but no. So because I'm going to use a heat sink, on here, because I think I can fit this no problem. You don't need this because it's too thick at the bottom, but if you aren't using a heat sink, then of course you can still keep this on here. But I'm gonna pull off this thermal pad and just leave it on the back of this and I'll kind of bag it and tuck it away in the box for the Legion Go S. So again, heat sink should fit, but I'll find out if this one will or not. I might have to use a smaller one otherwise, but it looks like it should. So if you look at the size of the heatsink, it's level with the fan. And so then if we're looking at the actual back plate, the back plate doesn't have anything that's going to push that off. So it should be good to go just like this. But again, I need to clone this first. So I'm going to pull it back out and uh, give it a good clone. And you can see, this is how I have to have it positioned, so I do have to take it off the uh, heat sink in order to fit it in the offline cloner. Not every offline cloner is like that, but I do need to do it for this one. And uh, that's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to clone it. And then this one has a cooling fan on it too. So that's just uh, something that you can do for the offline cloning, it makes it a lot easier. And while it's cloning, now's a good time to clean out your fan if you, uh, have an air duster, whether it's a can or just like a electric one, just blow out the fan, any other dust that might've accumulated inside. All right, my drive is done cloning, so I can stick it back in. And then I can rebuild this. And because the battery cable is sticking out so much here and pushing on the back plate, I can't actually close this down fully. So two options, either try to, you know, tuck this off to the side, which I might be able to do, or you got to switch to, you know, a smaller heat sink. So let me try option number one, and that is tucking the battery cable off to the side. So if I can just 
fish this over in a way that doesn't put a lot of strain on the wires. And I should be good. So let's just see if I can catch that over just a little bit more. There we go. Because we still have this gap here. Technically this should be enough, but again, I don't want to pinch any wires on the back cover. So if I can keep these all down here and bent in that way, that's the nice thing about wires is you can kind of bend them the way that you want. So feeding it like this, I should be able to close it. And again, I need to hook that around here and then hook that around over here. And let's see if this clips in. So I'll start with this side again and see. It looks like I should be good. It's, it's close enough, like the screw holes are still gonna line up. So I think we should be in a good spot here with that big clunky heat sink. So just with the battery cables out of the way, Everything is looking good. So I'll show you here quick that when you go down to the storage, it'll automatically show, like I literally just copied this, cloned the original drive, and it gave me the option right away without having to extend the partition to have the full two terabytes. So you can see one terabyte free out of 1.8 terabytes. That's perfect. So you don't have to extend the partition like you normally would for Windows. Now, if you wanted to dual boot, then you could partition it off and then, you know, set a Windows area on this. But because it's Linux and when you clone the drive offline, it just does it. So you don't actually have to do anything. So here's me showing you the extension of the partition. You don't have to actually do it. And that's the really cool thing about SteamOS and cloning the drive offline. When you do turn it on after cloning or, you know, swapping any of the hard drives, it does take a while. So like, yeah, like I'm talking a few minutes. So don't like power it off or anything or get too excited with it. Just let it do its thing to boot up. And you know, the power light will be on, but it needs to basically detect that the drive has changed. And so that's why when you saw that it booted up, the you know SteamOS already picked up the extension of the drive and it's perfect now. The screw that has the thread half the way is the one that goes in here. So catch that on here first. I'm gonna do the other side too just to make sure I don't miss that. It is getting a little later in the night, so that's when uh, it's a little bit more prone to missing something or skipping a screw. But we're gonna get through this, this is fine. Okay, let me just stick this middle one on too. If you haven't powered yours on already, make sure you power it on at this point, just to make sure, again, that everything is working properly so you don't have to tear it all down again just to get it all right. All right, back in with this left bumper. All right, so just hook it at the back here and then just need to get that little edge in. There we go. So once it's in, you can feel it click nicely. So the ones with the threads all the way, those are the ones that go right here. Okay, and again, Test everything out to make sure that it's good. It's a lot easier to take care of this while it's not fully put back together. Again, need to make sure that it goes in that little slot at the top. doesn't, then it won't click properly. There we go. All right, 
Now quick check. Everything's good. And now the cover can go back on. And that's gonna be it for the Legion Go S NDME swap. It's not too bad of a swap, fairly easy. And again, with the Steam OS extending the partition, super easy, it does it automatically. So if you enjoyed this, hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and take care till the next one.